Hi, welcome back to the second video demo on Perl. Uh, the guy who's talking is me, Joachim Sjöverstad, from the University of Skövde. If you happen to look at this without taking our courses, you should apply to, to something that we offer, because we're great. Um, for this video demonstration, we're going to look at input from keyboard and uh, some selections, namely if statements in Perl. Uh, so, to begin, um, it's very common that whenever you're writing a script you want someone to type something like what's your name, um, why are you doing this, what's the date or whatever whatever it may be um, and to do that you have to have some code within your script that facilitates that uh, and the way that you achieve this in Perl is quite simple so looking at the code example I have we're beginning with the statement what is your name this is just a question asking the user to input a name uh, and then to uh, let the user be prompted for his name you can use uh, this little sign which is basically an arrow pointing, pointing at each side uh, and of course you want to collect it to a variable that I called my dollar name here so uh, in order to achieve this uh, what I've done is using my dollar name which declares a variable and then I'm assigning that uh, that variable a value that is inputted from keyboard and I do this with those two uh, double lines then in the next line I have some code here that is print name is and the name so let's just check if this works and don't worry about the rest of the code uh, for now so if we run the script using Perl and the script name which is key input uh, underline ifs dot pl and uh, the first question is uh, what is your name and I'm going to input my name Yuke put enter and then you see uh, name is Jukke and then uh, we can of course use this in the selection this would be the same I mean if we're going to input a number if we're going to input something else whatever we decide to input here uh, we're just going to use those double um, double arrows here that's that's the code for prompting the user for input from keyboard and now I want to use that in a selection so to declare a selection in Perl what you do is you begin with an if and then a statement so in this case if the name equals Jukke then the program is supposed to print it's you uh, however, if something else may be true, I, I want to have another uh, another control here, so I've added an else if. Uh, so else if the name equals dream, and uh, then I want the program to print, hey, that's not a name. Uh, or finally, if nothing matches, then just go with else and print whatever. Uh, and there are several ways to use if statement. So uh, one way is that maybe I just want to check something. If the name is Yuki, I want to print uh, the salute here like it's you. But otherwise, I don't really care. So I can just print an if statement like this. Uh, another way would be if I just want to print the name if it's Yuki. Uh, then it can be followed by an else statement. So this basically means that if the case is that the name is Jukke, then it's you will be printed. But if it's not Jukke, if any other thing in the world is true, then the else statement will go instead and be whatever. Uh, when we're working with the else ifs, we can have as many as we want. Then we're just listing uh, a bunch of different statements. So I can just go on here. But beginning with if uh, name equals Yuke will print a few uh, otherwise I want to check if the name is uh, dream I do that with else if ELS if else if the name is dream I'm going to print hey that's not a name and then I could go on here and do more else ifs like else if name equals Thomas uh, hey it's that other teacher or whatever I want and then finally the else statement is sort of a catch-all so if not neither of the if or else if statements match then we go with else which in this case is whatever um, you also say that I've done some indentation here so I didn't just you can if you want you just type everything in one line but I think that looks ugly and I don't want it just beneath uh, I just don't want everything to start at the far left either because I think that this way uh, as it's written now I can clearly see that here begins an if statement and with the indentation that I've done here I can see that this belongs to this if statement then after the first if statement comes an else if and this will belong to the else if and so on and so forth so let's see if this works so if I type Jukke then the result should be hey it's you and uh, so go Jukke 
and it goes whatever. So now something is clearly wrong, I happen to know what, but I'm just going to show you. So you see here that we're selecting, uh, we're capping the name, which is Yuka, we're saving it to the variable, we're using it here, and it looks like if name is Yuka, then it should print it's you, but it prints whatever instead. And this is because when you type something from the keyboard, you hit uh, you end with hitting enter, which is a, what is called a, uh, where it's a, it's a character, it's a white space character, uh, because it's a new line character, and we have to remove this in a way. And there are two ways to do this, uh, I've co already added them here and commented them out. First we have shop, which removes the final, en uh, the final uh, white space character from a variable. So if I go this, then uh, the script should actually work because the new line character will not be at the end of the string. So you should take as a best practice that whenever you're adding something from the keyboard, you should chomp it afterwards just to remove uh, the new line character at the end of the string, which comes from you pressing enter when you're when you're adding it from the console. Uh, so if we try the script now, uh, then you can see uh, Yuke name is Yuke and then it says is you right here. And you can actually see up here we have name is Yuke and then we have an empty line before whatever uh, and that is that new line that was included in our variable. You see in this second run name is Yuke and then it's you comes directly afterwards. Uh, I just want to show you how shop works because it works a little bit different. It actually, remo re actually removes the last sign from the string, whatever it is. So in the first case we could have either shop or chomp, but chomp is a little bit more uh, nice in that it will only remove uh, white space characters, so it won't remove letters. So if I add a shop here as well, uh, you will see that when I run the script I will go with Yuke and it will be name is Jok and whatever. Um, so if I remove Chomp, uh, you can see that Shop alone will work just fine. Uh, so it's Jukka again and it's you. Um, but I would still encourage using Chomp unless you actually want the last letter to be removed no matter what it is. Um, I also want to do some numerical comparisons in in the variables so or in the selections. So I'm going to just do some modifications here. So instead of the print we go with what is your number and the variable name will have to be number. We're going to chomp, chomp the number to remove the ending space and then we can print it. number is number now I just figured out that copying this would be good uh, so the first thing we need to do is uh, to change our matching statements here and when we're working with uh, when we're working with string comparisons we use EQ for equal but when we use uh, when we work with number we go with equal signs instead. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So equal signs for numbers and EQ for string comparisons. So let's just do a simple test. If the number equals 10, print it's 10. If it is 100, print hey 100 and otherwise just print whatever. Uh, so we're going to run the script and see if it works. What is your number? 100. Number is 100. Hey, 100. Beautiful. Let's try again. 10. Number is 10. It's 10. Beautiful. Uh, when we're working with, uh, with number comparisons, we can also do greater than uh, equals to or whatever. And we can actually, I want to show you this, we can actually do this with, with uh, writing EQ instead of uh, instead of uh, equal equal, so maybe one way to go would just be with uh, be going with the uh, 
the written version of the comparisons. We're going to go deeper into these different operators in a later lecture. What I want to show you now is that we can do uh, greater than or less than also. So we want to go, we want to test if the number is bigger or smaller than 100. So if it's greater than, gt, greater than 100, it's more than 100. Uh, and then for less than, we have lt, less than, hey, less than. Uh, and if it's neither more or less than 100, it has to be 100. So let's change whatever here and go with it's 100. And we're going to try this. So the final thing we do is run the script again. What's your number? 100. It's 100. Wonderful. Uh, what's your number? 1 should be less than 1. And that's what the script outputs. And uh, what's your number? 1000 should be more than 100. And it's more than 100. And the way we achieved this was that instead of using EQ for comparison, we used GT, which is greater than or LT, which is less than in our selection. So that's it on selections and input from keyboard, which we achieved with the two arrows here. Uh, and that's everything. So thank you for this little lecture. And next time we'll work with files.